For as old as me, um, my condolences, but also you'll probably remember when Steinberg introduced VST, Virtual Studio Technology. There was a wacky font. Uh, I think it was four plugins were available, uh, a, a reverb, a chorus, and a couple of other things. Then uh, a few years later, the VST2 specification came out and it was able to have instruments. So there was the Neon. Um, this was a time when it was clear that at some point in the future, computers were going to be able to do everything in music technology. I know that's probably a, a fairly contentious point. But with the introduction of VST3, Steinberg wanted to move on. And about 11 years ago, I think they stopped you being able to make new VST2 plugins, but a lot of us are still using them. Cubase 14 disables VST2 plugins by default, which might cause you a problem if, like me, you're still using a couple of old plugins which you like and they're not available as VST3. In this video, I'll show you very quickly how to enable them, a couple of the pitfalls, one of which you might come across on macOS, but also there's something which is slightly confusing when you do do this. And hopefully we'll get you back on the, on the road if you're using any of these plugins. So here we are on Cubase, and this is on a Mac, but it will be the same on Windows. It will look pretty much exactly the same. There's one thing to point out here, which is don't try to do this if you're running on an Apple Silicon Mac and you're not running in Rosetta mode. VST2 plugins on macOS will only work when you're on Intel or you are running, pretending you're on Intel by making Cubase run in Rosetta mode. If you're running in Apple Silicon mode, you don't get VST2 support no matter what you press. You won't see this, so don't scratch your head over that. So to enable it, it's pretty straightforward. You go to Studio, and then go to VST Plugin Manager. And then down the bottom here, you will see a VST2 button, which you click to turn it on. And then it will scan your plugins. So in this case, it's not happy about one of these plugins. This is a great plugin, but for macOS reasons, it won't make it work. You can make it work with a video which is linked in the channel, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to cancel that. And then it scans all of these plugins. You will see, it may, may not do that instantly, depends on what order you've done things in, but you will see you get all these available. Now, what's it's not interesting. It's, it's not that interesting, but when you insert something here, if you have VST2 plugins available, you will still be able to see which are VST2 and which are VST3 because they will have this three here. So these are VST3 plugins, and all of these are looking like this. So you can see that the vast majority, if not all of the plugins I've got in terms of effects, etc., are VST3. Whereas if I had an instrument track, we will probably see some of them here, probably under other. Yes, yeah, so you can see some of these here are VST2, so they don't have the three lines. That isn't the case when you have got VST2 disabled. So take a note here, Groove Agent, Groove Agent SE, and Trias are all VST3. So if I disable VST2, and then go and make a new instrument track again, you can see now that three disappears. I'm not sure I like that, purely because you might be working on a system where it's enabled and see those, and now it's like, are these VST2? Because you could be thinking you're on a system where these are VST2, but you, yeah, anyway, it's it's removed the clarity of that indicator. I don't think that's particularly good, but there we go. So pretty straightforward to do. You may have a bit of time scanning, but once it's scanned it, you can use them straight away, and you can turn them on and off pretty much as well. So here again, I could just turn them back on. It does the scan and we're back in business. So once you've done it, you should be all good. So there you go. I think we have to face the fact that the writing is on the wall for VST2 plugins. So just the same way that the 64-bit transition happened and we had to cast aside many of the plugins we liked or we would bridge them with things such as JBridge, which work mostly successfully, in fact, much more successfully than Steinberg's own solution for it, but eventually these things sort of fall by the wayside. The same is happening with VST2 plugins. I'm not sure if there's the possibility of having a VST3 wrapper that would allow you to use VST2 plugins as VST3. Um, I, I guess there may be, but 
that's not what they want, is it? But ultimately, I think what will happen with most people is with probably the next version of Cubase, I would expect to not allow you to use VST2 plugins at all. So this is a way of them kind of easing you into it, but because it's easy to turn off, I think most people are just going to go, ah, I'll just keep using my VST2 plugins. Thank you very much. But eventually, we will not be able to do that. The problem is that they're a bit sort of flippant about it. They're like, oh, we'll just check with the developer. But in many cases, it's like an old free plugin or something that relies on synth edit or whatever, where there isn't a VST3 equivalent available. And you're just going to have to find an alternative. In the same way, when uh, Waves decided to go subscription only, and there was a long list of plugins which were like, ah, oh, this is a s substitute for this, this is a substitute for that. It's very unlikely you've got to find something which is exactly the right plugin just as VST3, unless a developer has taken over the VST2 code, because they're always going to be a bit different. But certainly this is something I think we're going to have to face in probably the next year. I think it's pretty likely given the timeline that they've given. But hopefully it's not too painful, and the, at least this video will allow you to use those VST2 plugins and give them a final sort of run around the block before you pension them off and go, yeah, we're all VST3. And apparently we're going to all stride into a much more wonderful world where we won't be held back by that. And if you live in the UK, you'll have heard this kind of language before and know that those promises do not get delivered on. But that's another story. Anyway, hope you found this video useful and we'll see you again soon-ish for more Music Tech Tuition.